Jack. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We're here for a special edition. We're here at the Marches, Centre of Manufacturing and Technology, and it opens today. We've got so many people to meet. So, come on, let's go. Enjoy. <laughs> so I'm here with Philip Dunn and he's the local MP. Thank you very much for uh, giving us your time. Now, can you just explain to everybody, you know, what the benefits of the MCMT are to the local area? Well, this is a great day for South Shropshire. We're here in Bridge North at the Marches Centre for Engineering and Training. Uh, and we've just launched, in fact, this is the first product, piece of, of training um, output to come from one of the state-of-the-art machines that we, that we have here. This is a four million, nearly £4 million invested by a combination of the private sector shareholders and the public sector through the local Marches Lab with support from Shropshire Council. And this is designed to train uh, apprentices coming out of school to become the highly skilled employees of the businesses that are supporting this venture locally. So this will provide, over the next 40 years or so, some 700 skilled engineers to go into the world-class engineering companies that we have here in Shropshire. Martin, tell us about your, your involvement here or your apprenticeship uh, at the Marches. So I'm an apprentice, apprentice at Granger Moral and then we're coming here for 15 months to learn our level 3 qualification and then we're coming here one day a week as well after that for the following 30 months. And when did you actually start? When did your apprenticeship start? About nine weeks ago, 11th of September, we started. Right, so for you, what, what have you picked up so far? I mean, we're in this wonderful uh, kind of uh, CNC machining cell here where we've got shear on machines from the Engineering Technology Group and Harding, Bridgeports, etc. Have you been in here yet? Have you worked in here? I haven't worked in CNC yet, but we are going to come on to that. So we're starting on fitting first and then moving on to using turning and then milling. This is a fa fabulous facility though, isn't it? Would you say now that engineering is becoming a, a sexy industry? Well, yeah, it's got a lot of new technology, bringing new technology all the time. Chloe, we're at the grand opening of the Marches event. What an amazing facility. Did you, you've done your apprenticeship a year ago. Did you have this kind of facility? Um, at my apprenticeship, no, we didn't have this facility. We had a little, small CNC, which probably only did about 50 mil by in X and 50 mil in Y, where we just made a little envelope. But having something like this for the apprentices, for them able to go on to manual milling, manual turning, to go on to something like this, it just steps up the uh, skills gap for uh, future employers. So it's brilliant. Uh, it's fantastic for everyone. And Steve, you've done your apprenticeship about 24 years ago. Did you have anything like this? Well, thanks for reminding me, Gio. No, fortunately not. We were still using chalk and slate. And <laughs> you sat at the back of the class with me, so you should know all about it. No, it's absolutely brilliant for the young generation of engineers to have this kind of facility, and it's so important. Thank you very much for your time. Lauren, females in engineering, they're few and far between, but, it, but it's growing and you're another addition to this. Tell us why you wanted to get into, uh, into engineering. Well, I did product design through school and it captured my eye. Instead of doing sitting behind a computer screen and trying to learn it that way, it's more hands-on and it's something I'm really interested in. And I thought, coming into engineering and being an only female, like you said yourself, it's it comes across challenging, but it's also an experience for myself and it's something I want to do. Gareth, we've followed you on this journey over recent months. What a fantastic day. How many people have you had here? Yeah, so we've got 300 plus people here to come and celebrate the opening of this fantastic facility. As you can see, we're missing nothing in terms of engineering manufacturing. I mean, as, as I alluded to earlier, 
This wasn't built for industry, it was built by industry for industry. So the collaboration is with real life engineering manufacturing companies, Salop Design, Granger and Warhol, classic motor cars. So we're providing the skills that the local economy needs. It's kind of bringing engineering back into the forefront of, of the economy, isn't it? I mean, we are, I've spoken to a couple of apprentices here, proud to be here working for great businesses. I mean, they've got a good future ahead of them with this type of uh, backup. Haven't they? Oh, absolutely fantastic. I mean, in the first co-op, we've got that much intake from females as well. So it's really coming to the forefront because it's such a clean, modern, quality environment. It's really attracting the focus for people to want to come into this sector. I expect there'll be some champagne flowing, won't there, at some point? It already has. I've already popped a cork. Don't worry about that. All right, time to go. Come All on. the best. So what's Granger's involvement in this place? Yeah, we're a shareholder of the facility. Uh, we came to it with three other shareholders who we all had the same problem, which was uh, skills gaps. It's been well documented and well discussed, and I guess the industry's whinged around about it for many, many years. So it was a wonderful getting together with our partners, local council and the LEP, where we all recognised the need and got together and did something about it. Matt, ABB Robotics, what's your involvement here? Uh, thank you Colin. We're uh, here supporting the marshes and income, uh, putting robots into uh, this facility so that uh, people, uh, the apprentices, uh, can come and learn about robotics and how to program them and also uh, local industry can come here and uh, test maybe potential projects without having to put the investment of actually buying a robot and can see if it's right for them. Matt Houghton, the technical partners here at the marches, what is it you offer? We offer all the metal working fluids and oils for all the machinery. Uh, we also offer awareness, coolant awareness training for all the apprentices. When you say coolant awareness, is coolant not just coolant? No, there's so much more to it than that, Joe. We've really got to uh, concentrate on the HSE, all the compliance, all the, all the reach guidelines. There's, there's a whole new uh, ream of um, compliance coming into the industry. Uh, so Houghton are really proactive, in, uh, especially with the grassroots. So dealing with the apprentices, uh, we're really proactive in getting the message across that, that coolant isn't just coolant, there's so much more to it, you know. I've got a lovely story here because we met Chloe uh, quite a while back as well and I asked Chloe Reeves how she got into the industry and Chloe's a huge ambassador for females in the industry and of course for ETG as an apprentice and what was the story just really really quickly uh, when I was growing up I wasn't really into girly things it was more go around my grandparents house and uh, sneaking into my granddad's uh, garage and playing around with their lathes and things so yeah good story a little bit of inspiration now we are here to meet Chloe's granddad's as well so lovely to have your company now we're here at the marches of course and you've had a little mooch around what do you think of the facility and how's it changed since you were in the industry? I retired 20, 20 years ago, so it's changed a lot. It certainly has changed a lot, loads of progression. And what do you think specifically of uh, this building, every, all the facilities that we've got here? Oh, I think it's fantastic compared with what we used to have when, when I started as a toolmaker apprentice. I think it's fantastic for the apprentices. Uh, and Chloe to come and uh, demonstrate these uh, machines. It's fantastic. Brilliant. Are you proud of Chloe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very proud. I thought that would be the answer. Thank you so much all for joining us. How is CMC benefiting from this centre and what have you got here? Okay, well we've directly benefit, benefited because we've got three apprentices currently uh, here carrying out their light, uh, light vehicle apprenticeship. Obviously having them on the doorstep is, uh, is uh, very convenient, uh, but it's uh, more, more, more than that really. The input that we have into MCMT allows us to some degree ensure that we get out of those apprentices what we need as a business. Now uh, also we've invested heavily in this facility both with, uh, in terms of time and money and uh, behind me we've got uh, a centre for uh, trim, uh, uh, for training for, for trimming, uh, for fabrication, for sheet metal work as well as uh, the ramps which are further down from us for the mechanical training. And what have we got behind us? So behind us we've got our sort of stock in trade if you like, so here's one that's uh, ripe for restoration as we say and one we made earlier. So I'll take the one on the left, you have the right and thanks for your time. My pleasure. I'm here with Richard Homden, who's the Managing Director of Salop Design. Now, we all know how incredible this facility is. I want to ask you the question, Richard, how did it all begin? Well, it's been an amazing journey. 
uh, all started from uh, within my own company, looking at the technical departments and seeing that the workforce in those departments was getting older. And there was a real danger that we didn't have uh, youngsters coming through, learning their own skills, and there was a danger that we were going to lose that magic that those people had. So it was important for us to get involved, uh, start to grow our own. Um, poaching each other's workforce is a road to ruin. And so we've all got to put a bit in uh, to maximise what we get out. And perfect. How do you think it's going to benefit the local area in particular? Well, this is fantastic for the marches. Uh, couldn't have been done without their support, the LEP, and obviously the Shropshire Council. It's going to be great for employment. It's going to be great for productivity. Uh, all companies need to keep investing in state-of-the-art equipment. And now we've got a workforce that is being trained on how to use that equipment. Exactly. And they are going to hit the ground running. Thank you so much for your time, Richard. Thank you very much. Neil, what on earth are, are further solicitors doing here? So we've been involved with um, Incom and uh, the project here for the last nine months. Um, it's just our way of uh, supporting the sector. And how are you doing this? So we've um, provided cash uh, as part of the um, part of the programme and the private investment that's gone in. Um, and then we're providing legal advice to all the manufacturing companies that put their apprentices through the, uh, through the centre. Jason, we're here at the Marches Bridge North opening today. Uh, great success, but could you tell me a little bit more why Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence gets involved with events like this? Yes, um, the reason why we've uh, joined the Marches is because we understand that the uh, skills gap it needs to be addressed throughout the whole of the UK. Uh, what we say is that Telford is, Hexagon is one of Telford's best kept secrets within Shropshire, uh, including it being the Shropshire's land, the biggest landlocked county within the country. So the Marches Centre is just one of uh, a number of centres that we are going to look into partner with uh, as, as we move forward in the future. Uh, we've got kind of two involvements here with Marches. One, actually, the Marches Centre itself. We've helped them provide them with every extraction system on site through the oil mist extraction for the CNC machines, the welding extraction and the extraction for the cars through our project company uh, Multifan. So we've helped them throughout the whole building to give them a clean working environment. Mark, what's HK's involvement in the MCMT? Well, we're going to be putting a, a Mitsubishi wire machine into the facility in Walsall and uh, as part of that we hope to be able to bring EDM technology into the apprenticeship side because at the moment it's a, it's a dark art. A lot of people don't understand EDM so hopefully we can start to bring youngsters into it at a younger age and fill the skills gap that there is in that part of the industry. So you're really future proofing here isn't it? That's the whole idea of it and eventually those people will be then running the business and not just be the employees as well. Uh, personally what do you think of the facility? Well I've in a former life was a defence minister. I visited a lot of world-class aerospace engineering uh, facilities and I have to tell you that what we've got here today has more modern, more relevant kit in the training element uh, than I've seen elsewhere in the country. So I think this is a, you know, a UK first for private sector, public sector support of apprentices for a, for a wide use uh, of employers in the future. As you say, the people who go through here will become the leaders of engineering in Shropshire in the future and who knows, maybe a bit further afield as well. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you. Valter, we are at the March's grand opening event today. Um, what's your involvement with the event and why is it so important to you? Now, we're sponsoring this event with the hardware logo system. It's important for us because we think that uh, automation is important for young engineers to understand. And can you tell me a little bit about your product, please? Yeah, it's a, 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 a robot loading system. It's a loading system for CNC machines, lathes and milling machines, and especially for uh, small size batches. We're very, very flexible and very short set of times. Automation is massive in Europe. Um, is it a growing market in the UK? And what's your involvement with the UK market now? Absolutely, it's, 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 it's getting massive in, in the UK as well. Uh, for us, it was a reason to set up Halter UK with our own local engineers here, here in the UK and our own local service team. And export, can you just touch on export, please? Yeah, we, we are a Dutch company. We produce, however, in, in Germany, just over the border in Germany, and um, we export to 18 different countries. By the way, by the way um, I see your program MTD uh, quite often, and I've never seen anything like that in Europe. You guys are doing a real good job. It's something that you should export as well. <laughs> so we will let's start exporting Swarf and Chips to Europe. Coming soon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 
Thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. As I'm sure you'll agree, the Marches is a groundbreaking facility for the engineering sector. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.